Ah, hello there. Well, I just start by saying thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. Also, I'd like to apologize for making you look at just a picture right now. But I figured this short little intro won't be long and there's no need to start any gameplay now. Also, I want you to listen to at least this intro without some distraction. However, there will be some gameplay in the next minute or so, so please stick around. Now, let me just quickly tell you why I made this video. Yes, there is a reason. You see, I've actually made this video before. I made it several months earlier, back in January. The only thing was, since I didn't have any game recording software or anything at that time, it had to be a vlog. And since I didn't know how to do vid transitions or add pictures in, it was just me talking, well, more like reading, for 22 straight minutes without anything going on whatsoever. Yeah, not the best way to get views, I know. But I originally thought it'd just be 15 minutes at most. Sadly, I was wrong. However, I still uploaded it and did get a response. It just wasn't the response I was looking for. So I recently got the idea to give it another go around by remaking it, adding some gameplay in the background instead of me. So that's how this all led up to this video. Anyhow, this is all the real backstory I wanted to give you on this video. I know you can already tell this video is going to be epically long, but please still try watching it all. However, if you don't want to watch every last friggin' minute, then there will be annotations that will take you to specific points in this video. Also, I'm sorry if you don't like the gameplay in this video because either the quality is awful or the actual gameplay itself is awful. I've given you the best quality I could possibly have for my video. And I don't care if the gameplay is terrible. This is mainly about the commentary anyways. The gameplay is really just a filler for all the sections I have to cover. Also, let me clarify that this gameplay is not mine. It's from a dear friend of mine named Alex Wee. To quickly sum up what she does, yes, I said she. She does Black Ops 2 Wii U gameplay clips and commentaries. Mostly commentaries, though. If you want to, mo if you want to know more about her, there will be a link in the description and annotation in the top right corner of this video. Please go check out her channel once you're finished watching this video. Also, in case you were wondering where I got all this inspirational music from, I got it from a YouTuber named The Succession. So, if you like original, inspirational music, go check his channel out too. There will be an annotation in the bottom left corner of the video, and a link in the description along with all the song's names. And just one more thing, I'm sorry if I messed up on my words or whatnot, but I have a lot to read. So please, give me a break. Anyhow, I've gone on and on enough. I hope you enjoy. Let me start by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Roy Teal. Like a lot of people, I have a dream. However, mine is pretty crazy, stupid, and far-fetched. You see, for roughly four years, I wanted to be a video game developer. Early? In other words, at the age I'm now, which is 16. Yes, like I said, this is pretty crazy, but please bear with me. You may feel that I'd be very good at it after hearing my idea. I have in the past sent multiple emails to multiple video game companies, tried getting on TV, made a YouTube video, like I said earlier, and even tried reaching out to bigger YouTubers for some support. All these efforts have pretty much failed, but I'm sure this attempt will work. Anyhow, let's get into the basis for my idea. Please note this is just a rough draft. Things can be changed if necessary. Now, this idea isn't some dumb fan-made idea. It's an idea that if worked on hard enough can guarantee millions to billions in sales. It is a sci-fi first-person and or third-person shooter set in the future. Not a bright and happy future, but a future filled with war. It is the year 2052, and Earth is at war with an alien race known as the Basilix. They are an intergalactic alien race that reside from the planet Galena 6. What do they want? Obviously they want to take over Earth and make humans their slaves. Or just kill them all, whichever. These aliens are no picnic either. The military has been fighting them for so long, since 2042 when it all began, that they are getting desperate. They have been advancing their technology just to defeat this race. They started by making new guns to counter the aliens and their plasma technology. You see, the Basilics used their fallen soldiers as ammo by using their blood. Once shot, the plasma blast eat at whatever they hit. They can carry less ammunition and do not have to reload so slowly. The military decided to use solar power to make laser guns that have the same properties. But the guns like success, except for two things. The solar panels, if get heated too much by use of the gun from its laser stream, or, on rare occasions, are hit hard enough, they break a crack and need to be replaced. So, soldiers can are required to carry backup panels in case this happens. You would also have limited ammo if you went into a dark room with no source of light. Also, the military decided to replace standard grenades with ion grenades, which disintegrate anything in their proximity. 
They also replaced metal blade knives with new laser knives that work just as good and do not need solar power, charging, or sharpening. Of course, if smashed or just hit hard enough, it will not work. Also, they decided to make robot soldiers to help aid them in their fight for Earth. These Inhumans would be considered two different types of the Earth Army. Aliens would also have two different types as well. They would have themselves and zombies of fallen Earth soldiers to make up their two types of the Galena Armada. Also, the military decided on making special headsets called the Dar X headset. These are headsets that can have an X-ray laser shield that protrudes from the earpiece, which can go over one or both of your eyes. They're like scouters from Dragon Ball Z, but they change colors and have multiple properties. They're typically black in color and can be used for scanning objects, communication, telling the condition of your body, which would be the health bar, tells the condition of your gun, tells what gun weapon you have, etc. The X-ray laser shield also changes colors depending on what you're using it for, i.e. when using night vision it turns green. The Basilics have a similar type headset as well, but, it would, but with a different name and design. Later on they kept lowering the age of soldiers eligible to join the military. They soon decided to lower the age to the lowest they could possibly go, 15. They did this after meeting a 15 year old orphan named Nicholas Elijah West. Nick has had a very hard life growing up. He was born on September 5th, 2038. He had a very normal life until he turned 6. When he was 6, he watched his own parents be killed by aliens from an invasion on his hometown. From there, he was orphaned in the nearest city and was in and out of homes before running away to Hope City to live on his own. Being only 12, there was no way he could get a real job to, pay, to get a house or pay rent for someone. He had no friends at all to support him either. Being homeless wasn't so bad for Nick, but it wasn't easy, especially in these times. You see, Nick is actually a very smart kid. He was the top of his class every school he went to. He was well behaved and did as he was told. The only problem was his troubled mind. Watching his parents die did send him a little stir crazy. Sometimes he has flashbacks of that day that seemed to drive him mad in a fuel of rage. Fortunately, it happens very rarely and can be, and can be controlled. Though, that didn't seem to change his family's minds when they dumped him back at the orphanage because of one of his outbursts. They were afraid he might hurt them or others close to them. So, by using his intellect, he makes the homeless life about as easy and enjoyable as possible. Just because he's smart doesn't mean he has a boring personality. He's funny, kind, and stubborn sometimes. Besides being smart and all those other things, he's very strong for his age too. Not like Hulk Hogan strong now, just kinda strong. He lifts weights just about every day and stays in shape. He is also pretty light on his feet too. I was thinking that I could be him, although he'd probably have to do a little editing, not much, to the model. I guess he could be someone else, but I just picture me as being Nick and can't get my mind around someone else playing him. Just because I'm used to picturing him looking like me, sort of. After two years or so of being homeless, the military meets him while defending Hope City against alien forces and takes him in. They check his background and personality and see he is the perfect soldier they are looking for. They recruit him and send him to training. As he is getting ready, the drill sergeant allows him to choose any gun that he likes. He sees a blue laser stream pistol and asks about it. The drill sergeant replies saying that that is a prototype pistol we've been working on. Its handle can have a knife protrude from the end of it. What, but this is a prototype. What is it doing here? It shouldn't be here. Prototype, huh? Well, I like it. Time to take it for a little test drive, says Nick. He grabs the gun and Jill Sergeant says, Hey, put that back. That isn't yours. It's a... Suddenly he's inter interrupted by the commander, appearing through the door. Let him have it, orders the commander. He can try it out. If it doesn't work for him, then he can get a different one. But sir, I... Says the Jill Sergeant before being cut off again. Do as you are told, replies the commander sternly. The Jill Sergeant sighs and tells Nick, Go ahead, take it. He does and grabs an assault rifle. He then goes into the VR training room. The drill sergeant goes into the VR controls room with the commander following close by. After a long and vigorous training session, the drill sergeant and the commander walk into the room and tell him he's passed. Your first mission begins tomorrow, states the commander. For now, rest up. You've had a long day. See you first thing tomorrow, Agent Blue. This is how Nick gets the code name Agent Blue. Agent Blue, so that's my code name? Questions Blue, Nick, with a smirk, smile, and an eyebrow raised. The commander replies, yes, I think it fits you more, in more ways than one. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? His smile fades and he says, yes sir. Good, the commander says, follow me to your quarters. 
Blue follows the commander out of the room. By now you're probably wondering what's the title of this game. Well, in a way, I already told you. It's called Blue. I plan on making this an entire series too. I was thinking about making this a Connect series, but I realized how hard it would be to turn around and move. So I guess just Xbox 360, PS3, PC, Wii U, and Wii, maybe? Although if it comes out around the time the PS4 and Xbox 720 come out, then it'll be for them as well. Also, I was thinking of just having maybe one made for the 3DS and Kinect, but there could be more made for them. There are quite a few key features to this game. One is the camera perspective, possibly. It switches from first person to third person a lot. You're mainly in first person when moving around and hip firing, ADSing, or scoping enemies. However, the cutscenes and some of the in-game scenes shift to third person. Also, if there's a big fisticuffs fight, being chased while driving a vehicle, or sneaking around, the camera may shift to third person. Another feature is there's a tertiary third weapon available in the campaign and multiplayer. It is your melee attack. Now your melee attack isn't exactly separate from your primary and secondary weapons and requires you to switch to use it. You can still use it as a defense while using other weapons, it's just different, i.e. if holding a shotgun you hit people with the butt of the gun. Also be like your last resort if you run out of ammo, which surprisingly can happen with both your primary and secondary weapons and cannot find any guns on the ground. First you start out with just your fist which damages opponents but would take quite a few punches to kill someone. As you level up, you move to Brass Knuckles, which cause heavy damage and would take less punches to kill someone. After that, you get a Laser Knife, which kills opponents when hit once, of course. Finally, you would receive the Ballistic Bowie, which is a Bowie knife with an air pressurized cannon as the handle. To fire, you would press a button on the end of the handle. It can reach kinda far and get you a triple kill if used correctly. Tertiary weapons can also be used to kill opponents cinematically when attacking them from behind, like in the campaign, and earn extra XP. There are also some different multiplayer games that can be played than like those in COD. There's an assassin match where the opposing team tries to kill the other team's leader, a treason match where there are two teams and random people from either team switch sides at random times, a firewall match where two teams try to take each other's data from a computer and turn it to their base and download it to theirs, a firewall cannon match where two teams try to plant a virus to erase enemy intel on your team from three computers. A firewall beta match where two teams try to download data then plant a virus on a neutral computer in the middle of the map. A firewall alpha match where two teams try to steal as much data from randomly spawning computers as possible. A bomb squad match where two teams try to plant bombs around each other's base and detonate them, and possibly more. The maps would also be pretty large. They would be twice as big as a regular COD map, but still slightly smaller than a regular Battlefield map. The environments would also be destructible. There would also be a lot of customization available. You can customize the way you play with perks like in Call of Duty, but that's not all. You can customize the way your soldier looks as well. They can be of any race, at least the humans and the zombies, whether it's white, black, Asian, Arabian, Latino, etc. And if you're a girl gamer, you're gonna love this bit of info. You can also change the sex of your soldier. You can have a male or female soldier. This goes for the humans, robots, zombies, and even the aliens. You can also change what your soldier says. They can talk in a gamer type lingo, military type lingo, etc. Also, you can change the announcer's voice. It can be a guy talking or a girl talking from any country you choose. Obviously, if you speak English, announcers from other countries would speak English as well, and vice versa for other languages. There will also be killstreaks that can be customized and selected like in COD. However, they may not be called killstreaks because Activision may try suing me. I would also like to include the specialist strike package from Modern Warfare 3, but with a different name of course. But I'm not sure because Activision still may try suing me. Anyhow, in case you, wa in case you wanted to know, the final score for this gameplay was 64 and 2. Also, if zombies are made the Basilic second type in their army, there will be a zombies mode. I know it may be kind of copying, but I can't really think anything else different. Plus, I really do like this kind. Anyhow, I was thinking it could be somewhat like God Zombies. Of course, there would be some major differences. 
To note, I've had these ideas way before Black Ops 2 Zombies was even thought of, so if it sounds like I'm kinda copying some of the ideas, I'm really not. For one thing, the maps and the players would be different. The maps would be bigger than the individual maps in Black Ops 2, like town, farm, etc. There would also be six playable characters, each from different corners of the world. They would be of different genders and even species. Also, it would take three hits from zombies to down a player, and instead of one Easter egg song in a map, there would be two, at least. Sometimes there's more. One would be a kick-ass zombie killing song, while the other is more like a bonus funny kind of song. I.e. when on Titanic, if you press use on an old record player, the underwater Mario theme plays. Like the other song, it would play as you play, so you do not need to stand next to where the music is playing to hear it. Also, for some maps, the mechanics would be different. For example, Titanic takes place underwater. This makes how you move and how zombies move a lot slower compared to on land, but the zombies would still be kind of fast to you when playing. Titanic would also be like a point A to point B kind of map, because it's based on the expedition to bring up the Titanic from the ocean floor, and the people get trapped down there with the zombies, and the only way of escape is out the other side, the front side. Since this map is underwater, there will be one special weapon available that on land isn't really a special weapon. This weapon is a shotgun. That makes it. What makes it special is that after two shots, it explodes to pieces. See Miss Mythbusters episode about shooting guns underwater to see kind of what I'm talking about. And the barrel and butt of the gun can be used as weapons. The butt of the gun can be used as a one kill weapon. You stick it in a zombie's neck and they bleed to death. The barrel can be used to whack the crap out of zombies. There would also be scary things that would happen when you first enter a room and then leave for a second then return. For example, when you open a room, it looks normal. Then when you leave and return, you may see someone hanging, a skeleton, a decapitated body, etc. and hear an evil laugh. You may hear something as you leave the room sometimes, or you may not. As for the per Percocola machines, they would be different as well. They would be called Perquisite Patchograms. Patches are mechanical hexagons that, when added to you, increase your performance when fighting zombies. There would be a fast patch, which makes you re which makes you move, reload, throw grenades, and melee zombies faster. Point blank patch, which steadies your hip fire aim and your scoping aim, removes idle sway from snipers, makes ridicule lock on to any zombies at a certain distance, and allows you to ADS faster. Powerful patch, which doubles your health, lets you run twice as long, lets you throw grenades longer and higher. Pickup patch, which allows you to revive players faster and gives only you one last chance to fight the zombies if everyone is down. Pumpum patch, which allows you to fire faster, have a little more ammo, and gives the buyer full ammo for all weapons once upon purchase. Penetration patch, which allows you to shoot deeper through objects in your way to kill zombies and a pickpocket patch which allows you to retrieve bullets from fallen zombies. There is one more patch that is very rare to ever find. It is called the perfect patch, which allows you to have every single patch and keep them, but it can only be found by doing a certain task. Along with patches, there are brutal badges that can be purchased. These upgrade your weapons when purchased, like pack-a-punch machines. Not only do they upgrade your guns, they can upgrade your grenades and hiding hologram, a hologram that can be purchased from a special weapon hologram. From a special weapon hologram, that's right. That produces a holographic image of your character to, dis to distract zombies. It's kind of like the monkey bomb. Your, your grenades become sticky grenades, and your hologram becomes a hide handful hiding hologram, or an HH hologram, which produces holographic images of all the characters, which attracts more zombies, lasts longer, and blows up after the time limit is reached. There could be a creative map mode as well, shouldn't have to explain that. So basically it'd be like if Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Halo got together and had a baby. Baby Blue. <laughs> you know that could be the project name, Project Baby Blue. By now I hope you think this is a good idea and think I'd be good at making this game or game series. If you do, then thank you. If you don't, then well that's just your opinion. But if you do like my ideas and want to see them come to life, then I'm going to need your help. That's right, you, the YouTube gaming community. What I need you guys and girls to do is simple. Spread the word. Just tell everyone you know that would also care about this idea. And spam any video game companies you know telling them about this idea, so I can get some recognition. Whether it's through email, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or wherever else on the internet, spread the word to them. 
Also, let all the big YouTube gaming commentators know about this, so they can help spread the word to more people. If things go the way I hope it will, video game companies will notice this and may want to jump on board with it. Of course, provided I get to work along with them and get my righteous amount of credit I deserve. For those who are worried I may fall flat on my face, don't be. I know that it won't be all fun and little or no work. I know that there are possible papers, speeches, etc. that would have to be done. I can handle them. Sure, it might be stressful, but I'm going to have stress every day of my life no matter what I do. Stress just cannot be escaped, little or big. Besides, I'm a very responsible, smart, serious, when I want to or have to be, creative and well-behaved 16-year-old. While I may not know how to make 3D models or program computers, I have, in my opinion, a mind like a movie director. I would know what the fans would want and what we could improve on next time you make a game. If there's a next time, if I were playing it. I can also draw really well, which could mean I could make some concept art. Maybe, don't have to, I guess. I know that there are certain laws and whatnot about miners working certain jobs, but these can be worked around somehow, I'm sure. I mean, if Justin Bieber can have a full-fledged singing career by the age of 16, then god damn it, I can make a video game career at only 16. This part is mainly for any video game company that may be watching. I know that if I were to go to California or wherever else there's a video game company that will accept my idea, I would need somewhere to stay. You do not have to give me a hotel room or let me live in someone's apartment or house. Still, I get on my feet if you don't want to. I could just stay at the studio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look, I know this is completely crazy and probably kind of pricey for you guys, but if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. I mean, with your ideas and skills and my ideas and passion for video games combined, we'll totally make a lot of money. So, with all that aside, what do you say? All in all, thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I've been waiting to do this for four years now. My dream being a video game developer early. Not the idea, I came with it a year or so ago. I know it's a long time to wait, but it seems to have done some good. The reasons are that I got this crazy dream when I was 11 and hadn't hit puberty yet. So I was still a kid and didn't really know what to do. What company and kind of game I should focus on and other things in life, i.e. school, etc. Also, I sent a letter to Game Informer about a Sonic idea of mine. At that time, I was focusing on Sonic when I was 12, but they never sent back. Probably balled it up and threw it away, those assholes. Also, for those of you watching, you can leave your ideas or preferences for this idea in the comments below. You can also show your support by liking this video. It is not a requirement, but it is appreciated. You can subscribe to my channel too, but I really don't care right now. All I really care about is getting my ideas heard. YouTube can come later. And for those who, well, let's just say prefer other things besides COD, don't worry. It will not feel like a complete clone of COD. While there are a lot of similarities between the two, it would still feel like its own game. I just mainly use COD as a reference for all of this because I like to actually play and experience games that relate to what I want to make. The idea will probably expand more and more as I play other shooters. But you gotta admit, having COD for reference isn't such a bad thing, since it is pretty much the top dog in the shooter genre. Look, I know I can do this, you just gotta believe in me. I mean, anything is possible. If you want to contact me, just call me at 678-848-4042, my cell, or 910-843-1963, my home phone, or email me at theroyteal at live.com. However, however, email would be the best way to reach me. You could also message me on YouTube if you'd prefer. Anyhow, I await your reply. And let's make some history! Thank you for watching.